when I was at the farmer's market, I had truffles, chanterelles. I was the chef that had a farmer's market stand and an organic farm, 32 acre organic farm. But underneath the table, I sold cannabis pesto, cannabis hummus, mm. cannabis salad dressings. So on a good day, on a Saturday here in the Pacific Northwest, let's say I would be at the Salmon Creek Farmer's Market. I'd do about $1,300 in vegetables on the top of the table. My cooler with the cannabis hummus, pesto, and salad dressings would do around four and a half grand. Every old lady, and sorry, I don't mean to make it like that, but every <laughs> old man in Clark County that didn't want to go to a pot shop because of the way they were treated was lined up at my farmer's market booth. And the farmer's market manager was a close friend of mine. She was actually a beekeeper that grew cannabis, so she didn't care. But from that, we spawned a farmer's market, an all-cannabis farmer's market, an underground farmer's market, where exactly what you just said happened. We operated for three years. Um, so for we me- tried, We tried that in LA. We operated for two weekends. Yeah. <laughs> and then I ended up in a three-year lawsuit <laughs> with the city of LA. <laughs> I've noticed in LA, and I'm from Providence, Rhode Island. I was raised around a lot of Italians that believe in a lot of words like omerta and family. There's a lot of rats and cheese eaters in LA, I found out. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. So when we get to the healthy aspects of food and cannabis, and I'm not doing this for an advertising employee. As a matter of fact, if you want to cut it out, you can. But <laughs> High Times Magazine, you wouldn't expect High Times to run a salad, would you? No. You would open up High Times magazine, avocado toast from Chef Sebastian Carosi. Looks good. High Times has got a pulpit. Yep. They're not running recipes about brownies no more. Right. Right. No. Why? Because they know their yep. movement and they have been crushed. They get a bad name. They get a good name. They get all this. And they're trying to move with the times with legal cannabis and still be the biggest media cannabis media business out there. Um, I, that was a bucket list thing for me, Levi. They called me and said, hey, chef, can you throw us a few recipes for the next four issues? And hey, throw us one for the 420 issue too. And I'm like almost in tears. And I'm like calling my dad going, guess what? Guess what? <laughs> you know what I mean? To other people, they're like, oh, you're in high times. And it's like, who else is giving me a voice to tell you to cook with cannabis by making a salad or avocado toast? 